call the meeting to order. Roll call of Alderman. Eisler. Here. Saw. Here. Meyer. Here. Paul. Here. Anderson. Here. Rogers. Here. Carpenter. Here. Hart. Here. Selsky. Here. Hayden. Here. Seiler. Here. Martinson. Here. Elmore. Here. Kiner. Uh, here. Musgrove. Here. Arlen. Here. All Alderman present. Roll call of department heads. Police Chief Clay. Here. Fire Chief Langston. Here. Mike Flynn. Here. Ken Vaughn. Here. Royce Carlisle. Here. Jamie Metric. Here. Tim Dragowitz. Here. Jim Schneider. Here. Leander Spearman. Here. Emily Colts. Here. Chuck Schaefer. Here. Bob Sable. Here. Everyone's present this time, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please stand and join me in the session? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America.
Bell was just going to have to bite the bullet and pay this guy off and get the whole taken care of. They, Bell was screwed up. They might as well just admit they screwed up. It's going to cost the taxpayers money like everything else they do. But just pay up. You made a mistake and own up to it. Uh, Jerry Boyer and her Kaskansky engineering was out there at the park meeting. And she's got a conflict of interest. She, her company's doing some of the work out there. And the mayor told me we need to do something with that thing. Either the was supposed to have been torn out a long time ago. And the 23rd, the church on West Main, 23rd West Main, isn't any more of an eyesore than many other buildings in town. They're just, Bell was trying to, uh, uh, force that church to, uh, to, to, to condemn it so the college can buy it real cheap. That's the idea behind that. Thank you. Okay, next. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, all. Uh, I'm Mark Peters. I, uh, I'm the Director of Community Health for the County Health Department. And I am actually here to share some good news uh, with the mayor and with the council members. You know, it was about four and a half years ago I stood before this council and thanked you because um, uh, the county at that time uh, was looking at some, some major health issues and they launched a campaign, a countywide campaign known as Get Up and Go, really centered around one thing and that is to try to raise a level of awareness amongst our citizens to take a proactive stance in promoting their own health through two things, active living, healthy eating. The city of Belleville was the first to pass a resolution to come on board with this campaign. I'm happy to say that since that time, nearly 12 or 13 other mayors have stepped on board with that. Now we are looking at a countywide campaign that's gonna impact roughly 270 citizens of this county that has now gained state recognition and has become a national model for how communities and collaborate around issues of health. A few months ago, we worked with the city of uh, Belleville and the mayor's staff to work on a grant. Uh, this was part of a federal grant that the state of Illinois received. It was called We Choose Health. It was under the Community Transformation Grant. The mayor uh, wrote a letter of support, and I'm very happy to announce, as of today, the director of the state health department, Dr. Hasbrook, had awarded the county $300,000. Uh, in favor of this grant, and really it is all about how we collaborate for some of the projects that we've been reading about. Parks, recreation, improving the walkability and the pedestrian-friendly aspects of our communities. I'm happy to say this is just the start. This is a one-year grant. Um, what is to follow in subsequent three years is an additional three-quarters of a million dollars, but we have to earn it. We have to continue to work together. So I definitely want to say thank you to the mayor. Uh, thank you to the city of Belleville. Thank you for all of all of your support. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for that ad before. Uh, I don't know if Mark has to leave or not, but uh, I didn't know he was coming tonight. But um, we should all be proud. I'm very proud of the Parks and Rec Department and all the various individuals who have gotten behind Get Up and Go. Uh, this weekend, I uh, observed and, uh, uh, and and went out and spoke to. Of the biathlon, and and what an outstanding second year event, right? Second year, Jim. Uh, about 200 people participated. Uh, these are these are really pretty outstanding athletes that that run five miles and bike 20 miles. But uh, the feedback we got about Belvo going from a handful of fitness activities to over 30 right now, it says a lot about the city's desire to get healthier and to get average people like me out there walking every day. And uh, this is good, and I, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, we're, we're going in the right direction, we just gotta keep it up. So thanks for the partnerships, that's great. Uh, who's next, who would like, I call the lady right here. Uh, Kathy, you wanna be next, you raise your hand about the same time I did. My name is Kathy Draper, I live at 500 South 19th Street, Bell. Um I know a lot of people, a lot of the, the, the newer aldermen weren't in office when the first park uh, meetings, special meetings came about. 
um, about the Bicentennial Park, but there were other options before the park was actually figured out as a park. When anglers had it and they, their building got burned out and Calhoun took it, there was a 12-foot fence around a pile of rubbish and weeds. We had offers of having Section 8 housing apartments go in there. We had offers of a uh, nursing home facility going in there. For safety issues, the nursing home wouldn't have been sufficient because of all the lakes, safety issues and stuff. The park is really the best option. And not only the fact that it would, you know, it's a great asset to the neighborhood and, and I live in the neighborhood. We also have a new neighborhood watch which Mr. Uh, which Stewart commented about the police department. I am on neighborhood watch patrol. I do it three times a day, night, given 24 hours. I, I'm around the, the neighborhood all the time. The park is within my neighborhood district of patrolling area. I do it constantly now. I, I've met neighbors that I didn't know. I've hear, talked to a lot of people. A lot of people are with on board with this. I understand there's a few of you that don't want to do it. But let me tell you too, not only with the health thing, we had the tour to Belleville. That was a great outcome. I worked that security crossings. It was a great thing. There was over 2,000 people this year rode on the, two, on the tour to Belleville. This is what Belleville needs. We don't need the big red shoe, okay? I know a lot of people don't like the big red shoe. I'm on board with you. I don't like the big red shoe either, but it wasn't my decision. I think the sculpture is a good idea. And let me tell you too, I went to Lindenwood and talked to the student coordinator and I talked to uh, Judy Winters with the District 201 District. Uh, she's the secretary of the District 201 staffing. They are all on board with this park thing. This would be an asset not only for the neighborhood, but for the college, for the students. It's within walking distance, bicycle riding distance. It's not just for the community, not just for the neighborhood. It's for everyone. They tell you on TV, I'm, we're gonna end this. They tell you on TV recently, the, the, the recent commercials and stuff tell you that you need to push these kids away from the TVs. The, the larger the kids get, by eating, watching TV, they're not getting out, they're not exercising, they're gonna have heart disease, they're gonna die at an early age. These parks are gonna make these kids go out there and learn and educate themselves and be productive citizens. And that's why I'm for the park, and I know a lot of other people are as well. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. The next lady. Give me an extra, I see your name. Good evening, I'm Carrie Tutsau, I live at 530 South 20th. Um, I live in the neighborhood that connects to Bicentennial Park, and I'm also the captain of the Bicentennial Park Association Neighborhood Watch. Um, I started a petition on July 22nd showing support of the park. Right now I have 430 signatures showing support uh, with the proposed plans and designs. Um, right now our neighborhood is sort of in a transitional stage more elderly people are moving out, more younger couples with children are moving in. The neighbors with children, including myself, can't wait, of course, to use the nature trails and the fishing and, and all that goes with it. Um, but there's also a strong number of our elderly neighbors that believe they will greatly benefit from this park as well um, because it is in walking distance. We picture old and young enjoying the quietness and serene atmosphere of the nature park a safe place for runners to take advantage of the numerous trails, and what a great place for Lindenwood students and faculty and the many employees of the crime lab to take a break and get away from the hustle and bustle of the office and classroom. Our neighborhood watch is also involved in the September 8th, 9-11 National Day of Service. We will be building housing for a variety of different animals to place in the park. We as neighbors have cleaned up a lot of trash back there in the past, and it's only gotten worse with the growing number of bum camps that were appearing. These people bring drugs and crime to our area, and we are tired of it. Leaving the area as it is will just keep drawing a bad element to the area, and we believe the neighborhood would eventually die. This park will be the gem of the surrounding community and will be a magnet to those looking to put down roots in Belleville. 
And on a final note, in regards to the petition that a couple of aldermen presented, um, the petition to abort the park was not signed by one person who lives in our neighborhood. 56 people signed to go forward with the park petition, and over 30 of them lived within a five block radius. So I do believe that speaks for what the people want. Please don't waver on the city's plan to continue the Bicentennial Park Project, which has already been unanimously approved by City Council in November 2009. Thank you. Who's next? Anyone? Joyce. Can I ask a question? Oh, I can tell you who I am. Tell us who you are first. Joyce Johnson, 1515 West Boulevard, Johnson Road. I have two questions. Um, this special task thing, are you going to go through that or do we just talk to Ken about that? We're going to, once we, uh, once we get it approved tonight, we're going to establish the first meeting and uh, we'll announce the meeting. So I'm sure that, you know. Uh, Can the public come in to that meeting? You know, it's not, it's, it's going to be a okay. you know, public uh, committee, so it's not going to be hidden. So, uh, we'll, so we'll can, you, can you call me since you're Yeah, we'll, you know, I'm sure it'll be published. Okay. I'm sure they'll announce, be glad to announce the first meeting. It's, our, our, our desire is to uh, get a group of people together to try to work through uh, the issues that were raised and try to come to some positive way to possibly move this forward. That's the desire. Now, I, I was telling Ken, I've been to a lot of his meetings, right, Ken? I sit on his doors. No, I don't. <laughs> but anyhow, to make a long story short, I was telling Ken that I don't live in Belleville, but my office is, as you, as you know. Um, that Terminator thing that the county's got has done wonders. And we work with them on that. She, we and used it. Can't they borrow that to get rid of some of this we, we, we have borrowed it. I mean, it's been part of a couple of our, you know, but, but that's something that we're working That's just one aspect of <coughs> It's, it's been wonderful on this one street that I have to drive home to. Okay, okay thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Michael Hackberg, 701 Centerville Ave. Um, first, uh, I'd like to clear up something or ask for us. Is there a legal conflict of interest where the Kimball Trust is represented by David Guyman? and the city is represented by Mike Flynn, both working for the same firm? Not at this point in time. I don't believe there's any dispute between the two parties. Uh, when that was originally uh, uh, brought to the attention of the city by my law partner, all those kind of discussions were with uh, Bob Sprague, and I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And, and quite frankly, to this day, I still don't know anything more than what I put in the paper. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the reasons for voting on this and having a special meeting was to make sure we get started, get this completed before the deadline. Um, the original Kimball Trust has no deadline as to when the money has to be used. I FOIA that and I read through it. Um, the, Do you want to respond to that, Tom? Uh, they asked us to give them a deadline. We gave them an initial deadline. We had to give them an extension right now. The deadline is December 15th. Okay. And that was that, that information was at the request of the trust committee. Okay. I was saying I read the, the trust and the trust didn't have a deadline and it. The deadline came from the December 10th or December 23rd agreement that you had with the trust. Uh, it also states in that agreement that it was extended to December 15th, 2012. Uh, unless parties agree from time to time to extend the completion date in writing. We could and we probably should ask for an extension if we think that this project isn't going to be done before the 15th. Just, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but my, my comments. Good. Um, next is that I agree that the wedding gazebo and restrooms are a nice addition to the overall park. I question if placing these buildings within the two-acre Kimball Plaza is in direct opposition to Mr. Kimball's instructions as so stated in the trust. Quote, no building shall be erected in the plaza except a minor service building, statuary units, and or fountains. Well, 
Well, let me just say, we went through that, but the trust board reviewed all this. And the restroom is in phase two. The rest, yeah, the restroom is in phase two and answer that question. That's not actually on the Kimball two acres. Right. But they re, they approved all these plans okay. um, after being reviewed. We, we were at very much uh, at their approval of this $400,000. So this has not been uh, willy-nilly figured out. I, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just pointing out that I don't believe that the trust manager or the mayor or anybody has the right to change Mr. Kimball's written instructions as so stated in the trust, but that's where the legal stuff comes in. So, uh, next point, the definition of open space. Um, you're including the parking lot in the definition of open space, Mr. Kimball's or request that you have two acres of open space. I mean, why not just dedicate two acres of a Walmart parking lot as Kimball Plaza and call it open space? I think that he meant open space was, you know, open grass to walk on and trails and things like that. So, I mean, at this time, I'm just going to disagree with the definition that's been used as open space. You certainly have your right to disagree. Okay. And last part. Uh, just for the new people that are here, quick project cost uh, update. We spent $104,000 already. The Mettler bid is $845,000. There's another, in next year's budget, a $250,000 new bridge that is being proposed that will have to be paid for, bringing the Kimball project to $1,199,000 uh, $1, at this stage. Now, um, now that won't yeah. just be the Kimball project. That new bridge will get into the whole park for all other phases, mm -hmm. and because the Kimball can be in access from the 21st Street project site, it will be able to be yeah. done that way. I so, saw, saw that. For so, the first so time I mean, you're you're, you're you're correct, but you're a little bit a little bit not quite correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's like when people state that the whole project's being done with the Kimball grant and the. And the no, we, we never, we never not stated. We never, I, no one to my office or the Parks Department ever stated that there was not match and there was not TIF money. The TIF money's been in the budget the last couple of years for this project. Did you write the letter to the editor that was published in the paper? <laughs> and, and, and the editor, what, the, what, the, what, what the, twisting word are you looking at here? The, in the paper, the write-up that was under the opinion section only mentioned the grant and the, the Kimball and the Parks grant. I'm sorry, but it didn't mention the, the tip money that was coming out. Well, also. we've had we've had article after article that's documented, and we've had, and I'll have to go back and look at my written article I submitted and what, because sometimes what's actually written in the paper is slightly sometimes changed or, to meet their space. I but agree. I can tell you, we never that hit at mean. all that the budget stated very clearly that there was a match to the one grant and that there also was tip money to be used. That's been very clear for the last several years at yeah. numerous meetings. No, I don't doubt it. It's just what I saw in the paper. Yeah, be careful what you read in the paper. I agree. So that, just as you know, as, as TIF 3 and 16 will be out $706,000 for this phase of the project. So thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you for your opinion. Anyone else? Anyone else like to speak this evening? Yes, ma'am. Marilyn Newmars, TV Race Bar and Grill, 9735 West Main Street. I'd like to speak on the resolution 3111, which is a binding referendum, which I thought was supposed to be a non-binding referendum for the video gaming in the November election. We really would like to have it voted to go ahead and have that on the November election. It's very important that we get it on the November election so that the people can vote. Um, considering all the talk we've had about parks and everything like that, uh, economy's tough. Where's the cuts going to come from if the economy really gets tough? The police department or some other department? Belleville does need this money, and we need the support of Belleville and all the aldermen for the businesses here that have been supporting Belleville all these years. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak this evening? Yes, sir. Good evening, my name is Rob Jelps. I'm uh, the owner of Propriety South at the street at 6.4 South Elmer Street. Uh, I've been attending the last couple of meetings and there has been concerns about uh, what the gaming is going to do to the community. 
Well, I'd just like to bring it to attention that uh, myself, along with all the other uh, tavern owners, are also uh, have investments in the community. Uh, along with that, we look at every option with our anything we change on our menus, anything that we may do different. We have to look at that option because we depend on our regular customers and our uh, community to support our business and our livelihood. Along with that, we look at this also as a concern or a pro, you know, pros and cons. And with all, I've had eight years experience and I'm just a fraction of some of my colleagues here. And along with that, we felt that we, that this is a positive thing, not only for us, but for the community. And uh, we would like to hope that uh, the city of Belleville allows us to uh, give us the opportunity to put it to the vote and hopefully bring it to the next ballot and uh, see what we could, you know, if it is, works out to be as hope, as good as we hope. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak to sir, in the back? Mike Saylor, I'm with Shelton Brand Mabry, 7400 West Main. We uh, represent quite a few of these tavern tavern hospitality industry, and their rates are based on their, re their revenue, their receipts for the year. And I just want to tell you that all of them are down. They really, really need to have this game put on the ballot, and I think it's good for them, and it's good for the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else tonight? Yes, sir. My name is Patrick Shannon. I'm actually speaking on behalf of Eddie Smith, who's a Belleville resident. He uh, undergoing uh, a fairly typical root canal. He wasn't able to make it tonight. Uh, but he had uh, asked me to bring in his 37 letters uh, from Belleville residents and another uh, 52 uh, that signed a petition that says almost what uh, the letters say. I'd like to read this if I could, please. Uh, it says, Dear Mayor and Alderman, Please conduct the referendum about video gaming at the earliest possible opportunity. The industry has already begun rolling out around the state. The Illinois Gaming Board Central System was declared live on Thursday, August 19th, and video gaming terminals are already being installed in licensed locations in selected cities. Neighboring communities will be offering video games in the coming months. The residents of Belleville desire their voices to be heard in support of or in opposition to video gaming and eligible bill businesses and nonprofits deserve a resolution on this issue at the earliest possible opportunity so they can plan for their future. Thank you for taking the time, uh, thank you for taking this issue seriously and including the video gaming referendum on the upcoming November ballot. Timely resolution of this issue will benefit the entire community. And can I leave these in your session? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else tonight would like to speak? Mayor, I'm sorry, I forgot to submit that. Would you get it? Oh, Mayor, Carrie, please. <laughs> okay, now one last time for anybody else. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Alderman, my name is Barry Gregory. We're the owner of Cree Hands Irish Pub and Banquet Center, 5500 North Belt West, along with my wife, Patty Gregory. I want to, I'd love for you guys, or the board, to vote on this tonight and say, hey, let's move forward with video gaming. Uh, we're already behind the ball in that we can't submit applications to the Illinois Gaming Board until it is approved here within the city. We all know that probably next month these games are going to be rolling within a mile over city limits at probably six locations. So we're already behind the ball, so please, if you decide to put it to a vote of the public, please make it in November. I would really appreciate it. We need it for our businesses. We need it for our business plans. So anything you can do to help us would be greatly appreciated. And all in and whole, I'd like to thank you for changing your position on gaming here in Illinois, for supporting gaming now. Why, why do you think I changed my position? Well, I received this note about your fundraiser, and it says 50-50 draft. Well, 50-50 raffle is. So I appreciate it, and I will welcome your vote. But you're holding a raffle there. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Anybody else tonight? Yes, I yes, sir, Gregory. My name is John 
Brisk. I own uh, Tim Joe's 6500 West Main and Cutter's 239 Carlisle Avenue. Um, we, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. I was hoping it could just be voted on by all the aldermen, but I accepted that they want to let the people vote. So I'm asking you to put it on the November election. Um, one of the things with this whole, how can I have 50-50 rep? Now you're doing it, but I can't, right? Well, you're having one, right? Can I apply to the... Okay, because it's legal, right? Well, then why can't we have... Yeah. Why can't we have... We really want to come here a one-night... Yes! Okay. Yes! Yes! Thank you. Thank you. Back to, back to the uh, business at hand. Is there anyone else who would like to speak tonight? Hearing none, I'm closing public participation. And we'll move on with the regular meeting. And I thank you all for keeping it nice and good. Uh, as we go into presentations, recognitions, and appointments, I'd like to start off by saying, um, I want to recognize the character word of the month is caring. And caring meaning being compassionate and showing others you care. And we certainly, this day and age, don't have enough of that. So I would ask everyone to continue. Many of our schools and many of our businesses put the, carry, the, the, the character words on the, on the marquees throughout the months. And I, uh, I ask that we continue to always give them serious thought. Uh, the next thing at this time, I'd ask, like to ask Deb Belmo under, under presentation to come forward and talk about this fabulous uh, opportunity we have with the Southside Park and the Mission Continues project on August 18th. Deb? Hi, I am Debbie Bubba, I'm the manager of Parks and Recreation. And again, um, I'm a little compassionate with the parks and the improvement in parks. And I love some flyers that said, step up to the plate on the table. Um, this is a great opportunity that came to us. And it's the Missions Continues group that came and asked us if we had a project that we would consider to have volunteers improve the park. We selected Southside Park. And it is a park that we have tried a few times to get some grants and we have failed. So this is a opportunity on August 18th to roll up your sleeves, help out. There is a email website address, missionscontinues.org to, to register. We currently have 300 volunteers at this time. Some of them are veterans, some of them are just civilians and we take any abilities. They said any ages, any abilities, we'll find jobs for you. We are doing projects such as painting, staining, building the horseshoe pit, uh, rip wrapping. We have 100 athletic football players coming from West, um, Lindenwood High School, uh, Lindenwood University. Uh, we are um, doing some block walls we are taking down fencing so we have all kinds and then it's a, just a four-hour service project so it's from 8 30 to 12 30 we do ask if you register ahead of time they have t-shirts for everyone otherwise you can register when you get there and then we are providing lunch it will be between south side improvement that is providing lunch and then also we have four parties that are providing lunch for us so we would like everybody's participation. Come out and join us. Say the website one more time. It's missionscontinues.org. It is on that flyer. And, or feel free to call me at Parks and Recreation Department. I'll make sure you get registered. It's been exciting recently. If you listen to any of the Cardinal games, they've been advertising at Fox Sports. And it's just great to hear uh, them talk about the city of Belleville. Uh, you know, we have a history for uh, pulling off events like this very successfully in our Paint to Town was a prime example of how we could bring large numbers of volunteers for positive things. So I'm very proud of the Parks Department. Uh, I'm extremely proud of uh, the volunteers who've already signed up, and I hope many of you will tell others to join us on August 18th and, and, and make this worthwhile project. Park, Southside Park is truly one of our oldest parks. It's one of our most inner city parks. We've been trying for years to get some large grants, but we haven't been able to land the large grants. This is a big, this is a big deal to help us with a lot of labor on one given Saturday. So this is exciting, Debbie, thank you. The next thing I want to also talk about is the presentation of the first annual Belleville Helping Belleville Day set for September 8, 2012. And who's gonna talk about that? Miss Emily. Hi there, my name is Emily Fulton, Director of Economic Development for Belleville Community Development Agency. Um, I'm here to 
Um, I want to talk to you a few minutes tonight about the first annual Belleville Helping Belleville um, service day that's been set for Saturday, September 8th. Um, this is part of the Greater Belleville Neighborhood Partnership Program. Um, right now, we've got four uh, projects going in three different zones. Um, in Zone A, we've got a cleanup that's been um, designed to um, help cut some low-hanging branches and things around uh, paths that students take to school. So it's going to be encouraging walking and cleaning up the area and making it uh, better for kids to use to get to school. Um, in Zone H, there are actually two, part, two projects planned. Plan. Plan. As Carrie alluded to, with the Bicentennial Health Neighborhood Association, they're planning on building uh, butterfly houses and bird houses and things of that nature for the park. Um, the Lindenwood Neighbors Association um, has also planned a new cleanup and a block party for that evening. And Zone E um, has planned a uh, general zone cleanup as well. I'm not sure where this is going to be focused um, right now. Maybe along Main Street or looking at you, I think we know that. Um, and then later in the day, uh, that will take place in the morning, later in the day at 3 o'clock that afternoon, we're going to have entertainment, um, food, and festivities and activities for families at Belleville East High School um, in the Commons area there. So just to honor those who serve our community every day, the firemen, the police officers, the men and women who are um, in the military, um, as well as to honor those um, who have helped serve, who have helped serve um, during this day of service. So, uh, if you have questions, you can contact me. Um, if you're interested in volunteering, you can contact Peggy um, in the Human Resources Department. There was an article about this in the web page, or on the um, newsletter, I'm sorry. So any questions you have, we'll be happy to answer. Thanks, Emily. And this is another um, outstanding event that's coming out of the whole new neighborhood partnership. And, and uh, there's a lot of hands that are in this. I, I want to thank the staff people who have really taken the leadership to really direct this and get it going. But there's a lot of volunteers already stepping up. And these are the kind of things that make our city stand out uh, from so many other cities. We have a lot of caring citizens. And we have an awful lot of good that's going on in this community. And I, uh, these are the kind of things that really make you proud of, of being part of Delva. So thank you to all of you. And I encourage all of you here, maybe some, some of the, uh, and I know they get tapped a lot, but maybe some of our business owners We'll also find a way to pitch in with some of this uh, recognition and think of ways that we can get some other support and some other possible uh, collaboration. So thank you, uh, uh, Emily, for that. At this time, I would like to uh, ask for a motion to uh, approve my uh, 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 sheet here that I passed out uh, uh, outlining the special task force for the proposed house, housing, crime-free housing ordinance. The members as following are Alderman Ken Kinsella, who will serve as the chairperson, uh, Stan Bretsky, Kevin Baus, Alderman Dean Hart, Linda Havlin, John Mazur, is it Mazur? Mazur. Mazur. Uh, Dan Bowman, and Tracy Tialba. Uh, Tricia, I'm sorry. Um, and understanding that Chief Clay, Bob Sable, Director of Housing, and Police Lieutenant Matt Heiskamp will serve as staff resources. Do I hear a motion to approve that? So Motion by Alderman Second Meyer, round. second by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion? I just have one quick question. I'd asked the last meeting about legal counsel being on this committee, which is if you were making an attempt to have a lawyer or something. Well, Mike and I haven't really gone into it, but we'll, as they get going there, certainly anything they come up with is going to have to be reviewed by the, the legal department. And, and, and will be so. And just like the drafts that they've had thus far, as you remember, at times didn't. At times where you'd ask me about them, and I'd say they were in the hands of the they're between at that time the police chief and the, and the city attorney. Whether they're at every meeting, they will be a part of this. Is the best I can tell you. Okay. I don't know that they need to sit there through the dialogue and discussion, but anything that's brought forward by the group to be reviewed. We'll go to this gentleman, and either him or his designees will look at it. Who is next? Anyone? Does that answer the question? Mike, I have a question. Um, it's frustrating that only members of your party get to see this work as there a reason Mr. Uh, Alderman uh, Consilla has been chairman of housing, where a lot of this has come from, and, and they've had many meetings, so I felt that he had been involved. And it was appropriate, but uh, uh, there's another independent alderman on the committee. And uh, I also think, you know, with uh, years of experience comes uh, chairmanships. So I, that's all I can say. It's, it's an appointment that's, you know, your comments duly noted, but my appointment is 
duly stated. So, I ask, we have a motion and we have a second. Do we hear any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Yes, I have a correction. It's on page five, the second last paragraph, and it says, um, well, basically that second last paragraph is wrong. That statement was made, I believe, by a different person, but it was not Ms. Fultz. Um, by reviewing the um, recording, her exact statement was, Basically, on a unanimous vote by the zoning board, we'll prepare the ordinance in accordance, I'm sorry, in advance of the city council meeting. If there's ever a split vote, even one or two members voting differently than the majority of the zoning board, then we don't prepare the ordinance. That is what she actually said. I'd like that changed. Duly noted. Okay. Mr. Hines, can you accept that? Yes. Is there any other comments or questions about tonight's minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes with that correction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. You go to claims payroll disbursements. What's your pleasure? Yes, Your Honor. I move to have the claims payroll and disbursements be paid. Motion by Alderman Anderson, second by Alderman Carpenter. Any discussion about the, that item of business? Roll call. Aye. 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 Meyer. Aye. Cole. Aye.
We have a motion, we have a second to approve case number 43 and have the proper ordinance drawn. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Case 44. Uh, we agree requesting a use variance in order to operate a daycare for up to eight children at 112 Cameron Drive. And the zoning board uh, recommended the denial unanimously. Motion to deny. Motion by Alderman Elmore to deny case number 45. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Schneider. Any discussion further? I thought she had um, changed her request for only three. Do you, do you have She's not withdrawing. Right. Right. Paperwork right. never got changed. Right. right. So, so we are therefore moving forward with acting on her original case. Okay. We have a motion and a second to deny case number 44. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor of denying case number 44 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries to deny. Case 45. Nancy Schulte, uh, local Lucy's, requesting a sign installation permit for area special control. The recommendation was for approval. And the address on this one here is Emily. This is downtown in East Main. 18 East Main. 18 East Main. We can rely on Motion by Alderman Cyber to approve the, the request. Second, Second by Alderman uh, Martinson to approve the request of case number 45 and have the proper ordinance drawn. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Case 46. Tom and Sherry Hassett requesting an area vote variance in order to fill the Third day onto the two car garage at 1612 11 Fairway Drive. Recommendation was approved. <laughs> Motion by the Cyber Second by Alderman Martinson to approve case number 46 and have the proper ordinance drawn. Any additional corrections? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Case 47, Greg Crawford. Requesting a special use permit in order to place three apartments at 301 East Main Street. The recommendation was approved. Please comply with the recommendation of the zoning board and proper items. Here's second. Second. Second by Alderman Kinsella. Do I hear any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Remind me what the discussion was about parking for these. Um, he said he was talking Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Case 48, Mark on stop. Requesting <coughs> sign installation permit for an area of special control. Recommendation was approval. We comply with the recommendation of the zoning board and have the proper ordinance. Motion by Alderman Myers, I to approve case number 48 and have the proper ordinance drawn. Any discussion? All in favor of approving case number 48, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. 49. Requesting a special use permit for a liquor license at 301 East Main Street. The recommendation was approved. I move to comply with the recommendation of the zoning board and have proper 
Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Cole to approve case number 49 and have a proper arguments drawn. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. City Attorney's report dated July 25, 2012. What's your pleasure? Motion, motion to approve and accept. We have a second. Second by Alderman. Motion was Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Meyer to approve the City Attorney's report dated July 25. Any discussion? I just have some questions. Mr. Flynn, um, some of these I know are done. Like, I know a red form. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, the dates. There's no dates on any of these. So I don't know what are you talking about? Which, which, which cases? Just any of them. Well, how about... Well, some of them are identified by name. Can you talk about the demolition cases that are listed by address? Right. Oh. Some of those are, when you say done, you mean demolished? Correct. Yes, yeah, some of those are demolished, and those are cases where we filed the demolition lien and the proceeding the foreclosure of the demolition lien. Okay, that's so, what it's, I mean, so, it's, so, it's, so it's a two part process. Okay, that's the part of the case. It was already down. Why was this still a pending case? Because if we don't get paid for the demolition, we'll leave, it, we'll leave the property and we'll eventually could take the property. Okay, okay. Or they might surrender the property. Okay, um, and is not the city still involved with the one regarding the corner of Jackson and Maine? I didn't see an update on that. I'm not handling that. So just okay, so that's that's the the answer is we are still involved with our attorney. Uh, Julie Brooke, who is, uh, represents, in, uh, represents the city from our insurance carrier. Because we were sued in that case, and it could be a liability to the city, our insurance carrier provides legal counsel. Right, okay. And I, and I think some of you had requested and I forwarded some things last week, an update from her. So, I don't remember how it went out, but it is, there was some request and I did not even know. That's correct. Yeah, you, I think you, okay, I couldn't remember who I did so many requests. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the city attorney's report. Any other discussion? All in favor of accepting this and have it filed, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This motion carries. Oral reports of standing committees. The first one is Alderman Cyber. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I have a motion to approve the low motion to sponsor the bidder for the criminal plaza, network development, 845,000, and AP So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Cyber. Motion by Alderman Cyber, second by Alderman Silsby. Discussion, anyone? Yes, Mr. Yes, uh, there are a few things I want to uh, note. Uh, First of all, to the public, the uh, petitions that were collected on June 28th have been filed with the uh, city clerk's office. They were filed last week. I have uh, also submitted to the city clerk this evening and asked that they uh, be filed with the uh, minutes this evening a multitude of questions and answers in relation to this uh, project in the uh, Kimball Trust. Uh, to speed things up, I'm asking that these uh, questions and answers be filed with the The ones you sent to me at the staff and I answered it. Correct. So that we'll add that to the record. And, and I want to thank Ms. Uh, Belleville for her uh, prompt and, and uh, quick response. Um, I do have one question and then, then I will have a, a comment. Uh, in relation to the Kimball Trust gift, yeah. How, and this was a question was raised to me, how did we go about buying the sculpture without it going through the city council, and perhaps maybe the city attorney needs to answer this question, when somebody gives a gift or money to the city, it becomes a public money, and usually it goes through <coughs> in some form of a process. And that's the question that was raised to me. And I cannot answer that question. The council approved the Kimball project and plan expenditure. Um, the sculpture became a topic and desired by the park staff and identified early on as something they desired. They worked with the Art of the Square Committee, Patty Gregory, etc., during the art show, correct? And, and this was locked in. The money was there, uh, it was approved. The project was approved, the, 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 the trust people approved it, the council approved the project, and, and I guess it was just felt that we didn't, um, you know, we weren't doing anything outside. The staff made the request and 
and we felt that it was we had a chance to secure this, which was a piece of uh, a piece of the project that they wanted to secure. Um, you know, just no different than we had to start somewhere with the engineering of the project. We had to do the engineering before we could get the thing going, so we had engineering costs. That's part of getting something started. Um, but, but the engineering was approved by the city council. And, and the project was approved by the city council. I mean, uh, I don't know. Debbie or Jim, do we? We actually had a full class budget, and the engineering and the sculpture that we had put in 20000 for sculpture, so we were looking for our piece that was in the neighborhood. This piece is actually valued at $28,000 to $30,000, and we went through the full class. We went through part of the square with Patty Gregory to get a good price, and also to get those funds. Start for the I'm just asking. I, I think I believe money that is given to the city, no matter how it comes to the city, it's the city money, and, and it's the role of this body to, to approve those expenditures. That's just my point. Of view. I've also uh, entered uh, your, your honor into the record uh, statement, which I uh, went as part of the minutes, but I am going to uh, to read. Uh, fellow city council members, mayor, city clerk, city treasurer, citizens. This evening we have an important question before us, and it's more than voting for spending of funds for Bicentennial Park. There are questions as to how we do business as a city, and I hope over the last few weeks we have learned from some mistakes. While the gift and grant from the Kemble Fund is nice, when it calls for additional public funds to be expended, is no longer a gift but a public agreement that in turn is a public question that could be open to debate, ridicule, or even public acceptance. I want to state that we as a city must do better in our communication efforts, but failed communication leads to mistrust by the public. The prime example is the way communication or lack thereof is dispensed on this project. But if the divisive issue is apparent among the public, the administration must dedicate itself to better communication. That could have started by informing all the new members of the city council of all the plans, previous documentations as it relates to the project, and providing all members with the renderings of the park project and to give us a conceptual view. To say we had the information and you never asked for it is purely unacceptable to me. As it relates to public expenditures, we need a greater effort to explain to the city the goals as it balances what the public defines as basic needs such as police protection, expected needs such as proper roads, and quality of life issues such as a new park. I want to say, I hear the people that are worried about crime. I want to say that I hear the people that they say my road is not driving and question such expense for a park. I hear the people that say we pay too much money for this park. I hear the aldermen that have asked why did this not go before the finance committee, and I myself question why it did not go before the finance committee. This is a major obligation. All protocols should have been followed. I certainly hear the people that reside in TIF 3 and see the transfer of funds from TIF number 3 to TIF number 16 as a possible misuse, abuse, or commingling of public funds that they are providing out of their property taxes. I have listened to phone calls. I have talked to people in person, read numerous, numerous emails, and even held a town hall public informational meeting at the park site to gather public input. <coughs> Response citywide was basically 50-50. The response board-wise was basically 50-50 to either abort or place the park on hold and 50-50 to proceed with the parks as presented tonight. At a minimum, I must tell, at a minimum, that must tell the city council that future pages need more public dialogue, better budgeting, and a review of the basic essential needs of this crime control and maintain our streets, curbs, and sidewalks as we try to enhance this park. However, I cannot go without saying that 50% of the residents that are from this project primarily live, that are part of this project, primarily live in close proximity by Cincinnati Park. And even though this area by 2013 will no longer reside in Ward 5, I and Oliver and Sylvia are still the representatives. The main purpose for this public meeting on July 28, 2013 was to get those neighborhoods of the park's opinion. I'm glad I did this for a change to tie of public input as it was presented to me and what I received. I can see where some web reservations at the park will provide all the promise that they hope for. I can see where some will say it will not raise property values or 
even fill empty houses. Property values will only go up as the city diminishes crime, improves its infrastructure, and work with all landowners and potential landowners with the means to fix their property. And one such avenue is to ensure that all taxes on the public are in check. From there, we need to look at programs to help the people in tough situations, where it's hard sometimes to choose between painting your house or feeding your children. Yet, if you attended the public meeting on July 28th, you could not become touched by the Hope the Neighborhood sees in the park project. And that ripple hope should be recognized by all. I asked the people in the area, would you rather have $250,000 go towards your roads and streets or a park? It was very clear, Your Honor, they stated they wanted the park and the funds are for that area and that ward, and I feel should stay in that area. I asked the people to hear them. I asked the city council to hear them. I do so with the reminder that if we move forward with the expenditure, strong public scrutiny will still continue to be placed on how this money is spent. I ask that all public permits be obtained and any further such expenditures that we plan to prioritize together for better. In addition, I ask that all the dumpings of any source be cleaned up for such decoration of property should cease and the weeds and grass should be trimmed. This is a park, Your Honor. We need to treat it as that way. Allowing runoff is not only possibly illegal, but also simply not proper. I am certain, Mayor, that the votes are here for passage. Therefore, an attempt to block the plan is futile, and I want to make it clear to anyone that that was never my attempt. I want to make an informed decision. Thus, I'm asking the City Council as a whole to consider supporting this project as presented, and that we will all come together united this evening and be cooperative in an effort to make this project the best we can for Belleville and focus our discontent on making sure such dilemmas do not arise in the future. For we cannot continue to divide the city. Mayor, gifts which bring on taxpayer expense must be viewed as public endeavor. Removing funds from tip to tip needs to stop while we build parks. We must better analyze how we will keep them crime free, maintain, or if we move services from one burden to another, we are just relocating the problem. All taxpayers at, at, at taxpayers' expense of suffering, for we lack the funds to provide proper service. Isn't his three minutes off? Sir, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. I can't take it no more. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, the time frame for completion in, in the end of, is at the end of this year, and uh, we, we granted one extension. Mayor, it is now in your hands, this project must happen and must happen in proper form. And, and again, I do want to urge all my colleagues here, I know there's been some discontent, but I believe that we need to move forward with this, with the United uh, Front for the people that live in that area. And, and I hope even those that have maybe voted against the committee uh, consider uh, voting in favor tonight. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I have to agree with at least part of what all of the people said. It's very frustrating. There have been both communication and protocol issues on this. I also want to say, though, to the members of the Parks Department and the Parks Board that I appreciate them taking the time this week to um, clue us in on what some of us missed because we have not been part of the whole process. I am very disturbed, though, and would like to hear what is the real story on the deadline. If it was not, imposed by the Kimballs, if it wasn't our own deadline, we've got another artificial crisis here, forcing us to make a decision that's not really, uh, there's no time constraints if we're the one who made the rules. No, we agreed with the trust board with this deadline. They granted us one extension already when we got into lengthy studies of the watershed, etc. That's absolutely not the way it's presented. I totally thought it came from them. It now find out at the ninth hour here. No, you, no, there was no. Okay, okay, make your case. I'm, I'm, you, you I, I have never seen the agreement. We gave copies of the agreement of the trust. The Kimball Trust. Well, several of you asked for it, you know, and, and, and you were at the meeting. Did you not have it present there, Debbie, that day? I had it. I mean, you got Joe. You called and asked for it, right? And, and somebody else did. We, we've not hidden it. I mean, I just. You know, if, if we could have, you know, I guess we could email it to everybody. We could copy it for everybody. 
But you know, a lot of people, you know, this has been going on for years. I understand, and, but and I also think that we recognize the economy has changed since we started this. Well, this was going on during the budget process this year, and these questions weren't well, raised by any of you. There was no narrative, no reason. It, well, it was when you got the sheet from Jamie about TIF 3. Jamie, was it not in there about using money transfer, transferring to TIF 16 for the park? They were all broken down and listed, and there was not a question. I repeat, not a question. And it was, we had numerous meetings on the budget. And that was both in 2010, 11, and 12, Kimball was mentioned in the budget. Am I correct? At least I know 11 and 12. Well, I think it started in 10 because I think that's the first time we put some money in there. So this has not been a secret. You know, so, I mean, I, I'm listening, I'm respectful, I, I recognize and I respect your comments, but we could debate this all night. I can tell you, to, to the audience, this has not been hidden, it's not been a secret. The whole timeline here of many, many votes, and most every one of them, Debbie, weren't they uh, unanimous on the council floor? Every single one. I'm very frustrated about what came out as Judge Meade to get five about the permits not being issued yet. The, the permit, as I we told you, Jerry Boyer was asked the question, and Tim Gregowitz are both still here. We are waiting, and we believe in the next day or so we will get the permit from IDNR. The man was on vacation last week. The state of Illinois is greatly short of staff in almost every department. We know we can't start. But we also know that Mr. Metler, we approved here tonight, has about two weeks of due diligence to get his bonds, to get with our unions and sign the project labor agreements and get all of his ducks in a row so that we can start and meet this agreed upon deadline of December 15th. Isn't that the correct deadline? Uh, okay, but if, if we requested this permit last November, this is not uncommon, but we were told in many conversations and emails that Jerry Boyer and, and uh, uh, our engineer have had with IDNR that they are down to the final questions have been all resolved and they believe that this is going to be coming in a matter. We thought we'd had it last Friday. We really did, but we found out the man was on vacation. So uh, I have every reason to believe. Now, Metler can't start until we have the IDNR permit. We're not, that's not, that's, not a, that's not a lie to anybody. That's the fact. But we believe it's here and we believe we need to approve the contract tonight. Mr. Metler knows that that's a contingency even if we approve this tonight, if that goes south, he knows that he can't get started until that, right, Tim? Yes. That, you know, so there's there's nothing there's nothing secretive or unusual about the way we're doing business. We're trying to be timely and get some things done. We have a park that people are anxious to use. There's lakes, there's there's things out there, and we're trying to move this project forward. This has been in the budget for a couple of years trying to get this forward. So you know, I don't know what else to say, but I think we've answered everything in committee or here. Anybody else? Anything new? Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, Council, uh, I learned since I've been elected that our city for the population is, uh, I don't want to say this, where you don't have enough park space. We don't. Compared to the national average, so I support this and I support any future uh, uh, attempts to get any property outside the, the city outskirts, basically. So, uh, the corporate area, we can bring it to. That's all. Any other questions or we vote? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Casella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. No. Anderson. Aye. Grudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martins. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. No. Musgrove. <laughs> Aye. Harlan. Well, we have a, it, it passes, and I believe it was 13 to 2 to, to 1 present. Is that correct, Mr. Stevens? That's right. So that is the Duke count, 13 votes for, 2 against, and 1 present. Uh, we move on to the next item, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir. Oh, I approve the low bidder of right way in the amount of $254,668 for street improvements in 23rd Street. So will be Motion by Alderman Seibert to a second by Alderman Kinsella. Do I hear any discussion about the 23rd Street project? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. 
Yes, we know that there's an old ordinance that we're going to have to look at. You're not wrong. Uh, but I will tell you, we made it clear, and I got approved the project. Right, Mr. Gregowitz? Yes. This was once again not a secret. It was not. We were just trying to get buckled up streets that had three and four inches in places of raised concrete for trip and falls where we do get drug into lawsuits all the time and the city has to pay. So to protect the taxpayers, we decided to try to get this phase of the coupler done first. It was the most dangerous. And, and there was no secrets about this. In a perfect world, if we had tons of money, uh, we could have we could have did so, block after block in brick. So we knew it was in the historical district we were just going to go ahead and, 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 and the historical anything. people at that time all knew about this project and they knew that we were planning to go forward with, with sidewalk concrete. And the residents we talked to, and to this point in time, I don't know if any of them are here tonight, but Tim and I have talked to almost all of them, and with the exception of the Belva Historical Group, uh, with the house that they're involved with now at 804, I think 804 is the house, with the exception of them, and I even went to St. Clair County Historical Society myself, all of them knew they were going back in sidewalk and they were just happy to have nice, new, safe sidewalks, and nobody was upset. And if IDOT would have stopped us at that time and said, you can't do it, we would have had to come back to the drawing board. But the project is an additional $106,000 tonight. It's up to $125,000. But Tim thinks now it looks like it's going to be $106,000. Did IDOT know it was in the historical district? Yes, absolutely. We didn't hide that. But, but you know, in this time of, of crunch of money, uh, we felt doing, making improvements on safety, uh, you know, in a perfect world, I'd love to put it all back in brick. But we don't live in a perfect world right now. Do you have a question? Uh, Mayor, I'm not on the streets of the Grace Committee, but uh, I was curious if this brick, is, is it gonna be a facade of a false brick that's painted? And no, it's no, it's not, it's not a stamp brick. brick. What, what, what came back after this project was delayed because we had been reported to the State Historical Society and the project, if you, as you noticed, got stopped from Mascuda Avenue to Forest Avenue. Um, they reviewed it. We went through many conversations back and forth, Tim and I, with various people from IDOT and the State Historical. And what was agreed upon was that we would die, attempt to dye the curb in a limestone color because we explained to them that getting limestone curb, we found tried, it was almost impossible to get the curb to match. They agreed to that. And they agreed that whatever was in brick would be replaced in brick, which was about a fourth of those two blocks. So that increase to do what we agreed, what they're demanding, 
is about $106,000 to $125,000 increase that we didn't have in the project. We are back to you tonight to get permission to complete the project so we can stay within Hank's timeline and deadline and get this project done. And, and that's why we're here tonight, and that's, that's the facts. Question. Yes? Is it, would it be normal protocol, Mr. Mayor, to, to uh, run our plan by the State Historical Society? Made well, I'll be honest with you, we thought when the state of Illinois signed off on them that that was already done. Having <coughs> we've gone through on North Illinois Street uh, with the IDOT project and the federal money, we assumed that all that was a green light. And I think it probably was until some complaints came into them and, and somebody got a hold of the right nerve in Springfield and everything came to a halt. First they were screaming about a few of the trees we took out and then we explained to them we're going to put back the trees just like we did on the streetscape but the trees were buckling the sidewalk and if you went to fix the sidewalk where it was elevated four to six inches in places the trees were going to be damaged and had to come out. We're putting back the trees. We're being very environmental friendly but those trees were at that time trees that didn't have great root systems for streetscapes and they, they buckled up sidewalks and they were buckled up up and down East Washington if any of you walked that street like I do most mornings. So this, this agency obviously <coughs> has the power to demand this. Well, they did and they, they, they did and I got, whoever at I got with all the federal money involved got, got, got concerned and, and stopped the project in the two blocks. So that's why we're here. But we did not try to go around this. We made it very clear at public meetings. We made it very clear when we talked about budget once again that we even talked about going with stamped sidewalk. But that was very expensive. We did it on the streetscape downtown. And, and, and you know, we got three more sections of the coupler that, that need to be fixed also. This one's the worst, I believe. But we don't have any federal money. There's no grants out there now, folks. We're gonna have to, if it wouldn't be for TIF, this money would not get done, this project. And we, we, gotta, we gotta keep pressing. The rest of the couple has been, it's been almost 30 years since it's been done, since 1975. So it's our, our entrance way to downtown, we, and we gotta fix the trip and falls. A lot of walking traffic downtown, which is great. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Should we not have gotten legal papers signed from the Historical Society of State and local? We trusted, I, we trusted I.M. on this side. This is what maybe us new aldermen are trying to say. We don't do things, we always do it on the handshake or word of mouth. Maybe we need to start doing it the proper way. Well, the, the proper way is not, there's nothing improper about what we did. We have done this project like we've done every other project when we're using federal money. We trust IDOT, who is who we go through, and they manage it. In the past, when IDOT's given you a sign-off, you've had to go ahead and Jerry's shaking her head because she worked for IDOT. This one here just, somebody blew the whistle and, and somebody at IDOT decided to call us our attention and reel it in and stop it. That normally, when you have IDOT's approval, you don't have to go and beg any further because that's the, that's the word and they stick to their word. We've done nothing any different than we have for any other project. We did not mislead, we did not misrepresent, we did not misuse. All we tried to do was get some sidewalks fixed and some street that was, it's like hamburger down there in the 700 block and fix some curves that fall apart. Uh, the intent was to do good things. Tim? Mary, the project did come in Slightly it's going to be over. But, but we have to get your approval tonight. And, and we're on we're, we're <coughs> top his mercy to get this thing done. Uh, you know, he, he's hoping to get within the time. What's his deadline? So, you know, we don't want to be in conflict now with Hank. We finally got IDOT or the state, uh, state historical uh, to agree to this, so we're asking tonight to move this forward and get it done. It's, it's not been a great situation, but I can tell you, this has not been our fault. We have been upfront about this, and, and uh, yeah, could we have minutes of, at the public meetings? Yeah, I guarantee you, well, as long as I'm here from now on, they'll be present, because I want to record what all of you say. I want, I want to document it. I want, to, I want it so I can vividly remember you. Okay, yes, and I would point out that at the January meeting of Streets and Graves, I did bring up the brick issue, and I did bring up our own ordinances. And it was talked about at that time that IDOT signed off and that we didn't have 
with all these other three quarters of the couple are still in gold, we did not have large amounts of money. That doesn't change the ordinance. Well, then we better. This is how we have a lot of ordinances that aren't up to date, and we need to we need to get them up to date. These aren't ordinances from the 1800s; they're from the 1990s. No, not all of them. Not what you're talking about. That's in there longer than that. And and, and, and I'm just saying that yeah, the, the, the ordinance book needs pension. To do it, hire somebody is expensive, and and we don't have the time at the moment to stand just to devote nothing else but going through the ordinance book. You got Put in a little twenty thousand or a hundred thousand dollar sidewalk. Put it in right. You know they know good and well. There's codes in there. So. I wish that your passion for this, all of you, would have been present in January when we had this in the budget once again. We could have worked through this a long time ago. I think we're But not with this. Not not to this level because it, it was a conversation that went on and there was. But anyway, we're we're here for the vote tonight to get this project done. We have a, a signed agreement with IDOT, uh, right, Tim? That's an agreed upon resolution to this. Uh, are there any other questions before we call for the vote? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Castro. Aye. Harlan. Is that your Yes. Motion carries. Moving on. Uh, we're on to Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of the Massey Sewer Committee, I'd like to make a motion to approve their long term control plan construction pay request number 25 from Jordan Luke John to the Lady Merchant for the amount of $1,008,045.17. I so move. Second, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Anderson, second by Alderman Hayden to approve that recommendation. That motion coming from Master Sewer. Discussion? Roll call. Eisler. Aye. 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 Meyer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Anderson. Aye. 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 Hey, communication from Joe was just sent to the Center of Southern Illinois requesting permission to hold our annual walk on Saturday, October 20, 2012, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., starting and ending at the Scott Drive Building. C. Communication from the Belvoir Humane Society requesting permission to hold their annual race for rescues 5K on Sunday, October 7, 2012. And permission to close Bell West Parkway from Frank Scott Parkway to uh, Route 15 from 8:45 until 10:15 a.m. And requesting a police officer to close the intersection from 8:45 until 9:45 a.m. They're also asking for two barricades and 20 cones from the Creek Department to be delivered on Friday, October 5, and picked up Monday, October 8. C. Communication from Lindenwood University requesting permission to hold a 5K run walk for the Wolf Stock event on Sunday, September 30, 2012, beginning at 9.30 a.m., starting and ending on the Lindenwood campus, and necessary guarantees for police assistance will be turned closer to the event, and they are aware that there are charges involved. D. Communication from seven restaurants and lounge requesting permission to shut down High Street between East Main and East Washington Streets on Sunday, September 16, 2012, from 3 until 7 p.m. for a bicycle poker run to benefit the proposed golf park in Bevel, and requesting four barricades to be delivered on Friday and picked up on Monday and parking meter signs that they will put in place. <coughs> Motion by Alderman Cyber, second by Alderman Meyer. Discussion. Yes, ma'am. Um, C mentions we're aware there will be charges for a run. And yet we have some other runs, but I'm still a little confused about what our policy is. Mrs. Fields, I think we're talking about all these runs now. Jim? Yeah. They're all they all know. They all they know. They didn't say it on all the They did say it. A lot of them have numerous volunteers, so there's minimal police involvement. 
Captain Lunk, is it fair to say, Chief, that he and Jim Schneider review it if they agree that the volunteers these groups have is sufficient to minimal police involvement, but if we have danger situations and they say there has to be X number of officers, then they're told what they have to pay. Okay, and D only requested one block be shut down. Did you have the route for the rest of that? Uh, Brian, is that on, on oh, your that's end? a pump. That's, that's not a. That's not like a race. It's, it's a, different. It's, it's a pump above thing. Yeah. And that block is because where they celebrate. Like, yeah, this is going to sell. It's going to end up there. The there all the bicycles when it ends up. Okay, I, I, this is no good. I got a poker run. Generally, you went to different locations. Yeah, they, they do. You don't shut the streets down. Well, like down is just for like an Indian point. That's not related to this. Okay. It's not related to the thing. It's just. Okay. It's just. Uh, they're, they're no different than any of the poker runs that, the, that the, our, our restaurants and bar have on a lot of Sundays throughout the year. They're, they're, they go and you see a lot of bicycles on the street. Okay, so they just need a place for everybody to park. To right at the end. It's going to end there. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve these. Just read communications. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving these communications, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we made these communications. Now we're on to petitions. We have none. Resolutions, I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Resolution 3110 and 3111. Absolutely. Motion by Alderman Silsby. Second. Alderman Second. Silla to read those two uh, resolutions by title only. Uh, you want them individual? Yes, please. All in favor to read by title only signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And resolution number 3110, a resolution transferring to unit to develop a block draft trust. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve resolution 3110, except Joe Aiden, second, and Alderman Silsby. Discussion on that? Alderman Silsby made the motion, Alderman Hayden seconded the motion on 3110. Hearing no discussion, roll call. Aye, Stewart. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewood? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Aye. Cybert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlett? Aye. Motion carries. Want to read the title only? Oh, we did. I'm sorry. Resolution number 3111, a resolution calling for a binding referendum on permitting video gaming within the city of Belleville, Illinois. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second to two. Alderman Kittmeyer. Uh, discussion? Yes, sir. Just reading it here says, shall video gaming be permitted in the city of Belleville, Illinois, in liquor licensed establishments? Including bars, restaurants, and certain fraternal and veterans organizations. Uh, this is supposed to be just for four. Restaurants that serve bars. Right, Mike. What's your question? My question is it says, in liquor licensed establishments. Now, a packaged liquor place is a licensed No, liquor licensed establishment is defined by the video gaming app. And it includes bars, restaurants, and certain fraternal and veteran organizations. And they must pour on site. That's spelled out in the app. It's using a term that's defined in the video game app. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, John, I, I was going to say for uh, miscellaneous that th this is just as good as any point in time. Um, and, and I know you, you can't stop people from. Uh, you know, doing certain things, but uh, I, I support getting this on the November ballot as quick as possible to get a decision in front of the people. Um, I, I'm just going to state one time, uh, it, the business people out there coming up at, at the mic and, and attacking all of them and, and, and outbursts like that is not helping their cause. And, and I just want to state that. It, it, Attacking the people over here is, is not helping the cause, and, and I don't think it's going to help the business. I've, I've tried every which way to, to get as much information on this uh, and, and work with them and, and, then, and to see that kind of stuff that uh, I, I find it very uh, upsetting. Comments are duly noted. Anyone else before we go? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Blunt, would you kind of go over us with us the difference between binding and non-binding? 
non-binding would be an advisory referendum that would come back to the council and you could either accept it or reject it, but you'd have to vote on it. With a binding referendum, whatever the vote is, is what's going to be the law. Okay, and it's a simple majority? Correct. And, and the only way we can change that is have another referendum. And after what we listened to and all this, to us, it was just from the beginning. Once we decided to take it to the voters, you know, it would be more difficult on a few of us if we got in here and then after we saw it was, whether it was a close vote or not, we're just going to trust that with a, with a large turnout November for voting, uh, I think it should give a pretty clear opportunity for both sides of those interested to show up and vote. And, and we'll see why it falls. Well, I, I was a little concerned that one of the business owners said, oh, I thought we were doing it the non-binding way. So well, I, I don't know that that wasn't brought up early when we talked about it, when I brought it forward to put it on the thing. You know, I, 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 I get scrutinized about anything and everything I say and do. And when the question was raised right away, and, and we listened, and we tried to be patient, listening to the business owners and to the concerns, uh, if, if it goes to a vote, and this country is based on a majority vote, if the majority in a, in a busy election like the November election, we all felt as we presented that, that it was a binding, it was a binding situation. And that was the way I presented it from the beginning. It was, you know, I, I think the, the, the business owners have to do their homework uh, and, and educate the public and continue to, uh, to explain their needs and what's going on. And uh, as one business owner told me today, he's already getting calls from people in surrounding communities that have passed it. And they want to know if they'll come look at a business in the building in their area. We are going to see challenges. And, and this is just people are going to have to make up their mind as they weigh out these things. That's what elections are about. It's, cho it's choice. And that's what I said in the beginning. It's a choice to give people a choice. So we're, we're there. The vote now means it'll go on the November 6th election, on the general election uh, for the, the big election in November. And it'll be worded like we said. You'll have a yes or no to approve video gaming in the bars, restaurants, fraternal organizations, or veterans organizations where they pour liquor as the act defines. Gabby, did you have a question? That's what I want to do. Yeah. It will be on the November 6th uh, election, for the presidential election. Any other questions? I just want to clarify that just like the political parties, the members, the bar owners, and people on the other side are free to send flyers or distribute information in any way they choose to educate the public. I'm sure they will. I think you've seen a group of them here pretty faithfully for quite a few meetings. I'm sure that they understand now that their work just begins, that they're as passionate as I think it's pretty evident. But we don't have any ordinances restricting them. No, no, it's just, no, they, 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 can they, can them. they can certainly do mailers, they can walk stuff, they can, they can do uh, a host of things to try to get their information out. Um, I'm sure people who are opposed to it, well, some may consider that, but, but I think it is about educating the public on their, on their view on, on how this can, uh, economically help the, the city and, and, and how they feel they need it. That's their job to do that. But, but, but the, the city's obligation pretty much ends once this vote's done. Once it's on the ballot, our obligation has ended right now. As far as we have less no position. We agreed to put it on the ballot. And that's what we're agreeing to do here tonight if I can get a vote. Roll call. Aye. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlo. Motion carries. It'll be on the November ballot. Uh, we go on to uh, the next item is ordinances. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinances number 7613, 7614, 7615. 7616, 7617, 7618, 7619, 7620, and 7621, and 7622. So moved. We have motion and a second to read by title only. I take it we want all these separately. Are there issues of reading as a group? If there's no exact, nobody spoke up, we'll read them as a group and vote that way. All in favor of, of, of reading the ordinances by title only as a group signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 7613. 
an ordinance amended in Chapter 52 of traffic of the revised ordinances of the city of Belgium, Illinois, as amended by amending portions or sections thereof. This creates a four way stop at St. Clair Avenue in the New York. Uh, ordinance number 7614. Excuse, excuse the microphone, I can't quite hear you. Do I use my Tim voice? Yes, use your principal voice. <laughs> And ordinance number 7614, an ordinance amending chapter 52 traffic of revised ordinances of the city of Belleville, Illinois, as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. This deletes the yield right of way intersection at Union and St. Clair. Ordinance number 7615, a zoning ordinance regarding case number 42, uh, Barbara Smallingberger, a master's real estate service. Ordinance number 7616, a zoning ordinance regarding case number 43, Jerry Boyer, Kaskaski Engineering Group. Or, ordinance number 7617, a zoning ordinance regarding case number 45, Nancy Schulte, Local Lucy's. Ordinance number 7618, a zoning ordinance regarding case 46, Tom and Sherry Hassett. Ordinance number 7619, a zoning ordinance regarding case 47, Greg Crawford. Uh, ordinance number 7620, a zoning ordinance regarding case 48, Mark Onstott. Uh, ordinance number 7621, a zoning ordinance uh, in regard to number 46, Mark Onstott. And ordinance number 7622, an ordinance amending chapter 13, animal control of the revised code of ordinances of Belleville, Illinois by adding section 13.113 there to approve. Motion to approve all the ordinances. Second. Second to approve all the ordinances. Motion was well, and still be second was well, and then so Any discussion? How are we going to let people know about the change in the dog ordinance? They'll be notified in housing upon any time there's a, a permit. There'll be an article on our newsletter. There'll be a thing on our website, and I'm sure uh, if we smile at Jacqueline, it'll probably be something in the, the newspaper at some point. So, I answer that? Yes, ma'am. Can we put it on the fireman's thing? I don't know that. We, that's pretty lengthy to put. I don't know that'll be explanation. We can talk about that it. But that, that might be a little bit of a lot of verbiage to put up there, just uh, about tethering more than one pet. You know, tether, you know, we'll have to talk about that. But all these other things we will get done. We have a motion and second to approve all these ordinances. Hearing no other questions, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodgewitz. Aye. Aye. Schulte. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Unfinished business. Communication on behalf of the Southern Illinois Street, Waters requesting permission to close West Main Street from 1st to 3rd Streets and 1st and 2nd Streets, North and South, on Saturday, September 22, 2012, for their car show in conjunction with the Oktoberfest from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. So moved. Motion by Martins and second by Cyber. Any discussion? All in favor of approving this uh, uh, request signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Any miscellaneous or new business? Yes. I have a quick question I'd like. It's actually, I wish I could say this is a prepared statement. It's not. Uh, the comments at the public participation, Your Honor, the direct questions, yard Nazis, Kamoys, name calling, I just would like people to uh, try to remember uh, John Lennon's lyrics, give peace a chance. We've talked about this before. Um, it sometimes gets a little bit too counterproductive, in my opinion. And I know there was some discussion about having it only if it was on the agenda uh, to be brought up, and that gets too restrictive to the public. But if we could look at maybe the uh, possibility of if you want to speak on anything on the last two agendas or the current agenda, uh, but having our staff called yard Nazis and things like that, I just think it's just continuing to escalate. And it's, it, it bothers me too. And I think it's time, it's, it's a danger, it's a fine line to set precedents and to set policy when we want to hear from the public, but 
we are all available at any time. They can call you or any one sixteen alternate at any time to have somebody come up here and call a city staff person a Nazi. It's just out of bounds, in my opinion. I and, couldn't agree with you more. And I think we need to maybe consider some type of policy. We have been looking at it. It, it is hard to craft and think about prohibiting people's freedom of speech, and we certainly encourage and do appreciate public participation. Unfortunately, some um, take their comments a little bit to the extreme, a little bit personal. I think we'll continue to look at this, but at this point in time, I've not yet come through with a recommendation that if you have something specific uh, floated by us, the city attorney, and we'll look at it. Uh, yes. It, it just, you know, I mentioned it earlier. You know, it, before 1993, a lot of people don't know, you, you couldn't even stand up here and, and speak. I, I served on a committee that chaired that, and our committee that, that brought that to, uh, to uh, its evolution today. But it was never at that time. I, I served with Bill Knapp, uh, Bob Samples, and, and, and Lois Hope. It was never meant to be a forum for people to come up and ridicule staff or or, or the mayor. Or, or, and, and absolutely, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think that they're doing these people that they want to do that. That they may seem cute to, but I, I don't think that they're they're. Eventually, they may need this body to help them. Unfortunately, so. while I agree wholeheartedly, public participation was missing years ago, and it was much needed. And I occur, could, you might find this hard to believe, but I concur with you that that was a good step. But I also agree. In the last couple of years, more un incivility has come forward uh, in the world and at these council meetings than I've ever seen on the si soon to be 16 years on this council. Um, it's a shame. And I think we all need to ask ourselves, because some, sometimes the person who is the most boisterous uh, is baited by the person before it and almost uh, encouraged. And, and we all need to do a better job. I think our character works. We need to all be hold and be reading them a little bit more. So I, I, I hear what two of you are saying. I concur with you. And uh, I, the, only, the only other suggestion I want to make is by, by protocol, uh, Your Honor, when they're up there speaking, they're they're supposed to be addressing you. They they and, and there's a manner if you look at our book how you address the mayor at these meetings. Correct. And it's not followed very uh, fairly well, by even council members. I, I would have no problem with cutting them off as soon as Well, I've had a few and you know in the past I've even had a few times I've had to threaten that the police might have to escort somebody out of here. And that I, I'm trying not to play that way. I, I understand you. But, I, but I, my I, patience I, is getting tried some nights and I don't disagree with you. And I'll continue to monitor these meetings as best and fairly as I can. And I think for some of the visitors who come occasionally, see that they can be pretty challenging at times. So, I agree with you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? I do want to know one thing I put on your desk. You probably have seen by now uh, Deputy Fire Chief Steve Klingler. And I'm, I'm sad to say that he has, a, I'm happy for him that he has a long one here. He's turned it as a. I'll get to that. I, I stepped out of line, but if you read the fine print, I have the line. I have the right to change the agenda. I made a mistake, getting old, but I, I'll get back to that. <laughs> Steve Klingler is uh, stepping down as Deputy Fire Chief September 1st. I sent a memo to Chief Langson, uh, the Battalion Chief, Assistant Chief Augie Werner, and all the captains asking them to submit to me. This is an appointed position by the mayor, approved by the City Council. I've asked them to send to me resumes if they're interested. I'm certainly going to look inside the department first, and certainly the fire chief and I have already had numerous conversations, and we will continue. But I want to make sure that all of you are aware that this is going on, and I'm in the process right now of, of looking at resumes soon and then doing, uh, doing those uh, interviews and considering uh, looking at the inside. Uh, after that statement, and, 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 and thank you for putting me back on track, I ask for a motion to read the motor fuel claims in the amount of $16,184.16. Do I hear a motion? No move, Your Honor. Alderman Seibert moved. Do I hear a second? Who was the second? Second by Alderman Markinson. Do I hear any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Alls. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Graduates. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. <coughs> Motion carries. I have no reason to go on executive session. I'm not going to tell you there was a question about the hole. Uh, Julie Brooke didn't respond uh, about the hole even to the newspaper. 
and there was a little update that you know as much as I know right now. Uh, the, the proceedings have been filed uh, with the summary judgments in court, and we're waiting to hear it from the court. Uh, so that's all I know about that situation. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion by the box, second to the second by Alderman Anderson. All in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. aye.